Hi, I'm Ed. And you may have seen a couple of videos with about our Mallard M185. And so I um, wanted to go ahead and do one more. Um, we've done some uh, some boondocking and, uh, with our tra uh, trailer. And we had a really great time. But uh, one of the things we, we kind of noticed is uh, considering we kind of live in the desert, there's not a lot of power available. And so I had to make some, uh, some minor tweaks and some adjustments and improvements. So I'd like to go ahead and share some of that knowledge on to you. Um, on what kind of improvements I've made to the M185 uh, to accommodate for, for boondocking because um, the, the M185 is, is a great trailer, but it's also specifically designed for um, in resort uh, camping. But it's not, not technically designed for boondocking. However, it's, it, it, it seems that the, uh, when they designed it, they made it to where uh, it could be customized and those things could be added pretty easily. Um, there's some nooks and crannies like, you know, for example, like the radio, uh, the little cubby where the radio can go, how easy it is to get to the power stuff. There, there's some little things that kind of hints me to where uh, it seems like it, it is rather easy to customize uh, for the, these particular applications. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the things that uh, I've actually done to make boondocking really, really easy in a Mallard M185. So I had to have the uh, the solar system added into here, um, so where I can I can actually monitor the solar coming in. I have about 250 watts of solar power uh, sitting on the roof. I have two of the large cells, and then I have one uh, smaller cell uh, up there as well. Um, I'll, I might I may even add uh, a little, just a little bit more, but uh, I'll, I'll get to that later on. But this is the uh, uh, the solar um, system that I'm actually using for the charge controller, and then I have my battery mount, or sorry, battery monitor system. So there's actually a shunt that's actually sitting down uh, down below. So this is actually the, the power the power converter uh, system. So um, one of the things I did kind of cover before is that I took a I added a, an actual breaker, uh, an extra breaker to the system. So uh, you can kind of see that that that, that last breaker is in the, actually sitting in the off position. So while we're actually uh, sitting here in the driveway, um, I have everything else turned on, so I can turn everything else on, but what I do is I have that last breaker turned off because that's actually the uh, the power pack down below. So I move the uh, the, the line for the power pack um, onto that other breaker, so that way uh, I can effectively boondock while it's sitting in the driveway because the power for the so from the solar charge controller with the pulse width modulation is actually better for the batteries than it is for uh, from the uh, from the actual power pack. So I can still use that, but um, the ones from the solar is actually a little bit better for the batteries. Now for the actual for everything else, so this is good because I can monitor my charging, and then this is my monitoring of my of my discharging rate. So during the daytime, you're not going to see anything because I'm not discharging anything, but I can monitor my voltages as well. And so we have everything here. And what's really cool is if you add, if you get the uh, the actual Bluetooth uh, module for this, um, it also shows you um, the current status uh, and, and history of uh, this particular unit. So it uh, makes it really easy to be able to tell um, like your amp hours, like how much power it um, it, 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 it used, it, it needed in order to be able to charge the battery all the way back up to capacity, for example. Uh, gives you a nice good history and everything. So what I also did was I started adding 12 volt power plugs because one of the first things we noticed is there's only one power plug up here by the TV and uh, yeah, that's not really gonna cut it because inside the bunkhouse, as nice as it is, when you can't run the air conditioner unit, um, those are kind of get a little hot and stuffy, and so it needs a little bit of air moving around. So I opted to try to put some uh, some 12 volt pl plugs in there, but because it's on this th this same common wall, um, I can access power very very easily for the 12 volt system. So what I did was I got this little um, power pack system. I'll go ahead and put a link below. And so what I have here is I have uh, USB ports, and then I, ha I actually modified this, and I've actually put a switch on here. And so the, the power comes up to the switch, and then the switch turns this on, so that way I can turn this on and off and save even more power. And turn that back off. And then I have a actual cigarette lighter plug. Cigarette lighter plug is perfect for fans like this. You guys, are, some of you may have seen this, or may, this is actually a knockoff of some of the more expensive $70 ones. This is actually like a $35 fan off of Amazon. It uses a standard 12 volt plug. Plug this guy in, seems to work pretty well. And I'll go ahead and post the, uh, the amp uh, measurements that I've actually uh, done with these. One of the reasons why these are so efficient is because you notice uh, towards the outside of the ring, 
of the actual blades, it's actually it's actually a complete circle. So it keep, it keeps some of that uh, that it, the, the inefficiency of throwing the air out. It keeps it uh, keeps it down, so that way it's actually pushing all of the air, and so it's not it's not just uh, wasting all that uh, that power. So pretty important. So I, I added one into right here, and then I added single ports, single plugs, one for the top bunk, and then I added another one for the bottom bunk. Now one of the things to also keep in mind. For the bottom bunk, it's very important to make sure that it's it's mounted up and, and far up and up away because when the, the actual bottom bunk gets raised up, this bottom bunk is going to come up to about here. So we have to make sure that there's enough clearance to keep in mind. So this is the actual, see the, you can actually see the, see the staple lines right here. This is actually where the beam is, okay, right here. And so this is perfect right here, and then this is where it, it, it's approximately where the where this is when it's when it's actually in the up in the up position for the door being open, and stuff being tossed inside. But this is perfect because now I can have 12 volt fans back here. Now uh, there is one more thing I actually added to this. I took power from the top of the solar charge controller, um, not from the battery side, from the solar side. Took two extra wires, ran them down below, through the uh, the back of the uh, the junction box, um, basically just routed it down and then went back towards the the side wall. And here's the reason why I did that. Here is that back back wall, and this is where the power runs in. So the other side of this wall is actually where the uh, the power converter box is. So what I did was I actually added an MC4 connector set onto this and then basically took those those lines off the solar charge controller and added it straight onto here. I had, had to add drill an extra hole onto here but uh, added this particular port onto the side so now I can plug solar, solar panels directly onto the side of the actual um, unit. But Ed, why would you add a port to the side of the unit when you have 250 watts of solar power on the roof? Ah. Because one of the things I noticed is when you're running stuff like fans to keep the, the family nice and cool because it is still 90 degrees, maybe you have the doors open, you're trying to get as, capture as much breeze as you can, but you still have to run some fans of some kind, maybe they watch a little bit of TV at night, there's there's a certain amount of power draw that you're going to end up consuming. Um, you have to have the ability to actually recharge that. Unfortunately, what you don't want to end up doing is the sun comes up early in the morning and then, hey... I don't have enough power to run the um, the vent above the the stove. Why? Because the power on the battery is to say below 40, say about 50 or 45 percent. That's getting kind of low. You don't really want to push a lead acid battery down below 50 percent actual power unless there's like some type of emergency. So because that kind of shortens the uh, the actual battery life. So one of the things I wanted to do is I found. A Renault G solar panel. Here it is. And so, the reason why I got this is because it has a built in little kickstand and it has the same little connectors as what's on the roof. And then I just got a, a cable harness, which is just a simple one. Got uh, spliced to the, uh, the right connectors on the ends. And so, basically, I can just go ahead and put this down on the ground um, and then set it up pointed towards the sun so in the morning uh, when the sun first comes up I can start pulling up to a two and a half amps two and a half three amps worth of power plug directly into that little side port on the side and then so early in the morning I don't have to necessarily worry too much about the power you know as the kids are starting to wake up I'm already starting to collect a little bit of power starting to go back in the battery from the night before because the fans are running and then so by the time they start kind of getting up and active, um, I have enough power. I don't have to, to worry too, as much uh, when I start cooking breakfast or stuff like that. Maybe I can turn the TV on early in the morning as well. And so when the sun actually does come up, like say around you know, 9, 10 o'clock, and it starts hitting the top ones above, it starts augmenting and starts adding more of that power into the whole system. Now to help out with this, I also added another battery. This is my original battery box that came with the unit. And what I did was I actually turned it at a 90 degree angle, well, almost 90 degree angle, put a piece of wood underneath on the uh, on the actual stand right here. And then this is a Group 27 battery box I added to this. There is a, a uh, so the way that this is actually set in here and designed, just in here so you can kind of see this. Difficult to kind of see, but there's... Part of the way the tray is, is, is designed, there's this, this, there's this L, L bracket that's actually in here. 
So what I basically did was I just kind of like grabbed my uh, pliers and basically just kind of folded it down as best I could. And then I was able to basically put the battery box on here, slide it over as much as I could. So basically I can have a group 24 box over there at an angle and a group 27 box um, sitting right here as well. And they're still anchored in place. And then the uh, they, they still all tie in up here uh, into the into the same common bus. So now I have um, a lot more power available uh, for us. So, so with the little power monitor uh, box that I have down um, uh, below the solar charge controller, I've made some observ observations about uh, how much power everything can uh, actually consumes within the trailer. And here are the actual numbers. So you can kind of understand uh, how much everything actually consumes. You want to pause this so you can actually see this. Um, so we do have a little bit of vampire power within the actual trailer, uh, and that comes in the form of the LP uh, detect leak detector, uh, as well as the standby power for the um, actual stereo. Um, so um, it actually will run, um, you can actually run everything on, on, the, on the stock battery for about 28 days uh, before the, uh, the battery will be completely dead, uh, and that's based on, based on math of a 7 amp hour draw uh, per day because I was able to observe using the Bluetooth uh, module uh, showing me how much charge uh, I get from the solar panels um, how much uh, I'm actually charging per day which is about seven amp hours per day so that was how much it was taking to just uh, kind of keep up with the uh, with the actual vampire power draw uh, and that was without the fridge running by the way so there you go power consumption within the Mallard M185 a lot of this stuff is, is pretty generalized though because a lot of the uh, a lot of the components that they use within these campers are are pretty uh, interchangeable though so so with the two batteries now I have um, I have the solar capacity to be able to run basically anything I want to during the daytime I have to be a little bit a little more cautious than towards the evening but I have enough power to be able to say run run the TV I can I can watch let the kids watch something like for an hour or whatever in the evening time we can run the fans in the evening as well all night long um, not a problem and then by the time we wake up in the morning the batteries are still like 60 percent because of the two batteries up there um, and then the little 50 watt little power uh, panel uh, helps out be able to charge the battery up just a little bit more. So um, I think this is a probably a much better solution than the original stock setup. Um, without the uh, any kind of solar at all, we're running just the furnace. It kind of has me a little concerned with the how much power it actually draws and how long you can actually run it for. But now with uh, with this setup, we can actually uh, we can actually boondock now in the Mallard 185. Thanks for watching.